Okay, hi there. Welcome to another video on fiscal policy. This one's a key one. Uh, we're going to look at how changes in fiscal policy can impact on a country's aggregate supply. Many students are pretty confident in explaining how changes in fiscal policy can impact the components of aggregate demand. Actually, relatively few students focus provision on the possible supply side impact of fiscal policy. And I think that if you understand those fiscal supply side connections, that can be great for your analysis and evaluation. Many governments across the world do use fiscal policy as a way of promoting long run economic growth, sustainable growth and growth without inflation. So I'm going to focus on two things, really. One is how fiscal policy decisions can impact short run aggregate supply or SRAS. And then we'll also spend a few minutes thinking about the long run impact of fiscal policy. Well, here are four examples of how changes in fiscal policy can impact the short run costs of producers across the economy, therefore shifting short run aggregate supply. One would be things like changes in VAT, value-added tax, a tax on suppliers. Uh, if VAT, for example, was to be reduced, currently 20%, the government reduced VAT, for example, for uh, travel and hospitality businesses during the pandemic. But if you cut VAT, that reduces their costs, and other things being the same will cause aggregate supply to shift outwards. On the other hand, the government might introduce some new and higher taxes, if the government brings in a carbon tax or lifts the carbon price floor in a carbon trading scheme, so higher environmental taxes will place increased costs on businesses, especially those that are energy intensive. As a result, uh, short run supply will shift inwards. Trade policy is linked to fiscal policy, so import tariffs are a form of tax, a tax on the costs of imported goods and services. If tariffs come down, for example, as a result of trade liberalisation, perhaps some trade agreements between the UK and other countries, that will lead to lower costs for businesses that have to import. Aggregate supply in the short run will shift outwards. And on the government spending side, changes in government spending on subsidies will impact on supply. If, for example, the government increases an import subsidy paid to producers, for example, farmers might have some of their costs paid, uh, an increase in subsidies paid to producers lowers their costs. I hope you can visualise that uh, diagram and therefore cause an outward shift of supply. So fiscal policy does impact short run aggregate supply. For example, if there was an increase in import tariffs or an increase in carbon taxes, both of which form part of fiscal policy, aggregate supply would shift to the left SRS1 shifts to SRS2 and other things being the same, that would cause an increase in the general price level and a fall in real output. Now, what about fiscal policy and long run supply? I think this is an important connection to understand in your revision and have a couple of good examples uh, for your notes. Well, impact at long and aggregate supply, of course, is a slow burner, but fiscal policy can have quite significant pervasive effects. First of all, some economists think that work incentives are impacted a lot by the tax system. So if the government changes marginal and average income tax rates, that might have an effect on people's incentive to work. Free market economists, for example, believe that cutting income tax is a way of stimulating work effort, work hours and labour supply. The bigger the labour supply in the economy, the greater is long-run aggregate supply. State funding on the spending side, state funding and research and development can often have very important effects on, on the pace of process innovation and dynamic efficiency in markets, uh, particularly in areas related to defence and education and what have you. Linked with that is spending on education and training. Well, that's a bit generic, but better funding of STEM education, for example, uh, better funding of industrial training, increased research grants for universities and things. All of these things can lift, improve human capital and, and labour productivity. And both of those are key factors determining the long term trend rate of growth. Changes in corporation tax and changes in import tariffs can influence the size and direction of foreign direct investment. Uh, quite a few countries have gone for a low 
corporation tax environment, deliberately designed to attract inward investment, which of course can increase the size of a country's capital stock and therefore increase productive capacity. There are some spillover effects on labour productivity and that can drive long-term growth. And the, and the, the fifth point in this slide I think is perhaps the most important, that publicly funded government spending on new infrastructure uh, is massively important to lift long and aggregate supply. Not only because it uh, creates extra productive capacity in the economy, but it also makes private sector firms more efficient and profitable too. It can affect their short-run costs. Uh, the Economist um, calls infrastructure the economic arteries and veins. What a fantastic phrase to use. Transport, ports, railways, airports, power lines. Pipes and wires that enable people, goods, commodities, water, energy and information to move about efficiency, efficiently. So if a country invests in better quality infrastructure, that allows an economy to become more efficient, lifting productivity and therefore raising the long-term growth rate and per capita incomes. Here's a section of the new rail tunnel under construction and the Crossrail projects. I think this is in Woolwich. Crossrail, of course, is a major infrastructure project linking uh, destinations east-west across the capital. And this is building work on the, the Thames Tideway Tunnel, the new super sewer underneath the River Thames taken in, in the summer of 2021. A lot, of, a lot of significant construction projects across the UK at the moment. And using an analysis diagram, one of the important parts about infrastructure is that it is triple powered. It affects aggregate demand. Somebody has to build the sewers. Somebody has to build the railway lines. It's adding to investment and adding to incomes with a hopefully a multiplier effect. So infrastructure increases aggregate demand. Productive infrastructure increases long run aggregate supply, increasing a country's potential output. And if it also makes many businesses in the private sector more efficient, if it brings down their costs. You know, the road system is more efficient and there's greater capacity and speed in telecoms and so on. Then that also increases short run aggregate supply, which can again increase growth and keep inflation in check. So there we go. I think an important revision video for you. If you can understand the links between changes in fiscal policy and aggregate supply, you'll be in a really good place when it comes to, to questions on the economic effect of fiscal policy. Stay safe, stay curious, and hopefully see you again sometime soon.